tonight as we gather for this Ash Wednesday service. I do want to say right before I walked over, I saw Jackie Wheatley's comment about how complicated it can be to make the sign of the cross in ashes on on your forehead. Um, on your do, own forehead. Yeah, and, and anyone, we do have many years of experience in this, but mm -hmm. I do want to say that um, that it is always meaningful. Um, it is a little bit sad and hard that, that we can't share in the sacredness of that moment, um, looking in your eyes as we say the words and make the sign of the cross upon your foreheads. Um, but one of the things we're proclaiming tonight is that that message um, is written upon our hearts. And so we trust and know whether or not you're able to wear the outward sign of the cross on this Ash Wednesday. We know that that cross and what it means and all it represents in our lives is written upon your heart. So we do know that a lot of you were able to come by yesterday yes. for our Fat Tuesday yep. Parade. I want to say thank you to Kristen Hetrick. She's in the room right now because she was our donut maven. maven. Um, the maven of donuts. Um, and she made that, put that together for us. It was really fun to give you all donuts and throw beads at you. Mm -hmm. And our Lent box kits. You got um, to throw beads. I didn't do the beads. It's box. true. I kind of took that over. My yeah. kids got to do a couple too, and it was really fun. I just passed out donuts. <laughs> um, we know that some of you have wondered and asked if there are more kits available. There are a handful of you that signed up for kits, um, including the Ashes for Today and our Lenten devotional book, um, that didn't pick them up. If you need to arrange to pick those up, please let us know. Otherwise, we do have people who um, are on, kind of on a wait list um, for those Lenten devotional kits. So, um, as we shared, Ash Wednesday is the official kickoff for the season of Lent. And we have some plans for Lent. We do. You are going to say No, go Oh, okay. No, um, <laughs> so, tonight um, we are gathering in this way, but next, starting next Wednesday, um, we are going to have um, a few uh, gathering in person worship services between now and Easter. This is kind of our slow warm up to having um, gathering in-person services again. Though They will be outside um, starting yep. next week with our midweek Lenten service. Yeah, out in the courtyard. So we look forward uh, to seeing uh, many of you uh, for that midweek uh, Lenten service as we do sing Hold an Evening Prayer together for that midweek uh, Lent. We have uh, live music as well. And um, um, story to tell mm -hmm. is our theme, so we're looking forward to those stories that we're going to share uh, throughout Lent and our midweek services. Yeah, we're going to introduce this a little bit tonight with Ash Wednesday, but Lent we are focusing on the healing act of storytelling and inviting people to share stories um, as a way to hear and listen to one another mm -hmm. and name God's presence um, in the midst of our lives and in the stories we share and hear. Um, so that will be starting today. Mm -hmm. yep. so. Um, so for those of you who are at home who do have ashes available, um, we want to share don't mix your ashes with water. We hope we made that really clear. That actually will turn your ash into lye, which could potentially kind of leave a burn mark on your forehead. Um, some, of you, mark, of yeah. <laughs> some of you um, also receive temporary tattoos. Those are great. I also wouldn't recommend putting those on your forehead. The temporary tattoos? No, you might want to find another spot for those. Um, but you can, if you'd like, mix your ashes with a little bit of oil. We actually have a video of the ashes burning the palms last year to make ashes. Yeah. Um, Nick had that on earlier. We might see that again. Mm -hmm. um, but again, um, you're welcome. A little bit later in the service, there'll be a designated time to make the sign of the cross if you haven't done that um, mm -hmm. for yourself already. Yep, or to your family, mm -hmm. your household, you can do that as well um, and share that during that time. Anything else? I think that's it. Probably. Yeah. So what happens now? Now we have our opening hymn, <clears throat> O Lord, Throughout These 40 Days, which I think is a reference to Lent. Yes, I am. 
responsibly, so you're welcome to read along with me. Um, our bulletins were posted in the chat as well as emailed out earlier, um, but we turn our hearts now to God as we hear these words of the song. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and write in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me, and would have me know wisdom, deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Let me teach your ways to offenders, and sinners shall be restored to you. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God of my salvation and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For you take no delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offering. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a troubled and broken heart. O God, you will not despise. Friends in Christ, today with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life. And our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our deep need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy in communion with God, to love one another and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent. Self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love. Strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament, let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault, in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. 
We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. We have shut our eyes to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy, mercy on us, O God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, us, O God. Our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, us, O God. Our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, O God. Our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. At this time, we continue with the imposition of ashes, so we'll say a prayer. And then following that prayer, um, you're invited to make the sign of the cross on yourself or others with your ashes. Um, and as you do so, and even if you don't have ashes, you can still make the sign of the cross on your forehead. Um, you're welcome to use water or even just your finger. And as you do so, say the words, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Thank you. 
accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that, that we may, may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in our eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you the God of all mercy, full pardon, and forgiveness. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading this evening is from the book of Joel, the second chapter. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains. A great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, Call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why, sh why should it be said among the peoples, Where is their God? Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our second reading is from 2 Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. 
By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left. In honor and dishonor. In ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and not yet killed, as sorrowful, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. Word of God, word of life. according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So we want to start out tonight by uh, showing you a picture. Now this picture was taken last Ash Wednesday, February 26, 20, 2020 by either Sarah Zimmerly or Mary Jo Petrovelli. We're not quite sure, I'm sure they'll, they'll admit to it on the chat in just a moment. <laughs> and so there I am preaching in the foreground. But probably what you are all noticing is that there is Pastor Sarah sitting next to Pastor Lori Lyon. 
Not very many people knew this at the time, but this was the last time Pastor Lori was with us in worship here at St. Andrews. The next day, her daughter, daughter Rachel, along with Cara Clement, who's in that picture as well. You can see her bright colored hair on the other side of, of Lori. She's kind of hard to miss. Pastor Laura Zeal and myself, we helped transition Lori out of her home and into a memory care unit of an assisted living facility. A few years earlier, Pastor Lori had been diagnosed with a form of early onset dementia. And the disease had progressed to a point where she needed additional help. Also, little did we know that on this day, in this picture, um, that within a matter of few weeks, COVID-19 would arrive and change everything. As you all know so well, we have been through a lot in this last year. It almost feels like a perpetual season of Lent. Mm -hmm of waiting and watching and hoping for resurrection to happen. But we bring up this picture and this memory of Pastor Lori for a few other reasons. One, we do not have to highlight that we do want to highlight that the Senate has shared that a scholarship fund has been established in Pastor Lori's name, specifically to support women as they are preparing for pastoral ministry. We have shared the details about how to support the scholarship fund in our announcements. Secondly, we want to, want to highlight another more very universal truth. While Pastor Lori's disease did define her last days, Pastor Lori was so much more than her dementia diagnosis. Wasn't she? Perhaps this seems obvious. But it also seems like right now we live in a time where it can be tempting to reduce someone's identity to simple, quantifiable categories. Good or bad. Right or wrong. Right or left, for that matter. <laughs> but one gift of our Lutheran theology is that our understanding of the human condition is that we can't reduce someone's existence and identity like that. People are complicated and complex. We all have stories. The way that we name this in our Lutheran understanding is that all people are both sinners and saints. And Ash Wednesday is especially important. It is the day when we acknowledge and name our own sinful nature. It is a day of humility, of recognizing that the earthly things upon which we base so much of our existence and around which we expend so much energy are not eternal. They are very temporary. As the Bible says, the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord stands forever. I also heard that author Elie Wiesel once said that God made people because God loves stories. However, God is not simply interested in just the highlights or just the lowlights of our lives. God loves us in the fullness of our identity with all of its complexity, and chooses to act not only through our giftedness, but also through our brokenness. We look to all kinds of places to try and get a sense of our value, often through comparing ourselves to others. We somehow think that because someone seems to have the perfect life or the perfect job or the perfect little family, the perfect appearance, that they must be better or more deserving of happiness. But our Bible tells a much different story. As you can see in our gospel reading for today, 
Jesus is not at all interested in the show we put on for others. Jesus is calling us to examine what is written upon our hearts. And as we've heard in our first reading from the prophet Joel, Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. And so today, on this Ash Wednesday, we name our humanity. We remember the God who also came to be with us in the person, in the humanity of Jesus, who emptied himself on the cross to forgive our sins and bring us all into the promised newness of life. If there is one thing that we can say that defines all of us, is that through Christ, we are forgiven. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. O oh God, you call your church to be ministers of reconciliation throughout the world. Inspire your church in its proclamation of the gospel to guide its ministries, to build up the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh God, you created the earth and all its inhabitants, and you declare that it is good. Protect the mountains and valleys, animals and plants, and direct us to be good stewards of all that you have created. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh God, you desire peace. Direct governments and leaders to work for the well-being of all people, and raise up advocates to speak and serve on behalf of the downtrodden. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. God, you are our hope in the midst of despair, our help in the midst of sorrow, and our consolation in the midst of affliction. Grant comfort to all who suffer in mind body or spirit, and support caregivers who attend to all in need. And we pray now for those we know silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you. O oh, faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We invite you to share a sign of peace this evening. Lord's peace. Peace. Peace be with you all. And at this time, we are continuing with the receiving of the offerings. Again, we want to thank you for your ongoing support. Um, for those of you who are interested in providing a gift um, to the Pastor Lori Line Scholarship Fund, um, you can be in touch with the office. We can help you get the information you need to be able to give um, in honor and memory of Pastor Lori. Um, but we also want to thank you and ensure our appreciation for your ongoing giving um, for the general fund ministries of this congregation, which allow us not only to have our ministry through um, through this community, but also to reach our arms out in love and care for our neighbors. 
um, in the spirit of this Ash Wednesday and the season of Lent to love God and love our neighbors. Um, so we thank you for that support. It's very easy and safe to give online um, and also want to invite you, whatever ways you're comfortable with, um, to share those gifts. We appreciate it. Thank you.
You have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts, the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. And after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So just like we, some of you may have improvised with the ashes around Ash Wednesday, we also want to acknowledge um, that God has hopefully gifted you with some way that you can celebrate communion this evening with whatever you have available to you, you are welcome to do so. Um, and we trust and know that God, God is present and comes to us in ordinary things. Oh, 
You have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Receive this blessing. May God, who has called us forth from the dust of the earth and claimed us as children of the light, strengthen you and give you hope for your journey in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is Lamb of God. And just a reminder again that next week our intention is to have an in-person outdoor gathering worship. We're not limiting the number of people who can attend. We are just asking that you let us know ahead of time if you are planning to come so we can prepare for numbers. Um, we're going to be asking you to bring your own chairs as a part of that as well. Um, and there will be information and updates coming soon um, on behalf of the council and our reopening team. So you can look for that letter uh, and email um, in the next few days outlining the plans. Um, hopefully we can see um, those of you who are comfortable in doing so. Again, oh, I also want to share, we'll be live streamed. Yes, I think you're at my mind. Perfect. Do you want to say more about that? No, we'll be live streaming it too. So if, okay. you, if you can't gather with us in the courtyard, you can gather with us in your kitchen. And that's okay. It's all, <laughs> we, we want you all to feel comfortable and safe. Um, we are going to take all the same precautions with masks and distancing. Um, as we always have been throughout this whole period. Um, so we want to, but we'll, like I said, we'll share more about that, but we want to give you options either to be here together um, for that next Wednesday night service at 5 o'clock, or you can continue to join us online through Facebook Live. Anything else? That's it. Okay. We'll sing our song. Closing hymn, Lamb of God. <laughs> Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.